All right, so we back with another video. Today we're gonna be doing a tier list going over all, well not all the NBA players, but pretty much most of the prevalent NBA players when it comes to like the stars, the best role players, and like all this other stuff that we're gonna be going over in this video. Um, this is gonna be encompassing pretty much everything from the regular season, playoffs, NBA finals, everything. So yeah, um, and this is gonna be ranked in a different way than I usually do it. So we got first option. I think that's like a the best player on the NBA championship team, not necessarily a number one scoring option, but the best player on the championship team, which most likely would be a number one scoring option. But I just don't want y'all to think that's like what it means. So first option, best player on the NBA championship team. Second, best player on the championship team. Third, best player on the championship team. High level role player, borderline star, inflated number of guys, low impact. So people that be on like bad teams have good stats. But if they went to like a different team, they would play a completely different role. Um, elite specialist, so this is like your elite defenders, elite shooters, elite play, like elite at what they do, pretty much. They kind of like only get out there for one thing, a key role player or a glue guy or a bench warmer. So we got a lot of people on this list. Let's go ahead and hop into it. You haven't blocked you, that's tough. Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is a tough one to rank because I feel the heat made his weaknesses extremely glaring um i feel like it's a little bit overreactions to uh Jalen brown i still think that he should be ranked in the area that he should be ranked um i don't think that we should just base how bad he was off of that like if you expected him to be a number one option caliber player that's just not what he is i think he is firmly a second option I think he's one of the best second options in the league. And I just think that the Heat just had a good game plan for him. Um, especially when his one option, I guess, either got hurt or just wasn't in habit. So it makes it glaringly easier to make your issues, like, more glaring when, like, you're not expected to be that number two anymore. They're kind of trying to push you towards the number one, which is not really what he is. So I think Jalen Brown is the number two. That could be something to change depending on other people I put in number two, but I think he's a number two. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is another one that's hard to rank because this is why why I probably should put Jalen Brown down. I don't think I don't think Jason Tatum is a number one. I think if he is, he's like a low low tier number one. He's like a low tier number one a player that could be the best player on his team or a high tier two. The only thing with Jason Tatum, I think Jason Tatum is more so likely to get better than Jalen Brown. So he could easily, firmly become a player that can be the best player. But I, I just don't see how you can say he is a number one when, like, his team is as good as it is, bro. Like, he has arguably the best team death-wise. The only thing that really that he didn't have that good this year was coaching. But last year, he had one of the best coaches last year. And he had one of the best teams death-wise again last year. So, like, I just don't think he's a number one either. I think they kind of just have two number twos. And if he is a number one, he's just low-end number one. Um, but you could, you could say that Jalen Brown deserves to go here. And Tatum just deserves to be here. I just think, number one, there's only, like, a couple real number ones in the league. So, this may be m more correct. Derek White. I think Derek White is... Borderline star is kind of tough. I think I think I really do like Derek White. I think Derek White is a high level role player, personally. Um, I like his defense. I like his playmaking. He gonna make. He got good IQ on both ends. He gonna make. He gonna knock down big shots. I like Derek White a lot, personally. I think any team would take a Derek White on their team as like a a secondary ball playmaker. Um, he can play like a combo guard, but he also can play like a point guard. But you don't really want him to be like your main distributor. I would say. But I like him as a role player. He's definitely one of the best role players in the league. Lonnie Walker. Um, Lonnie Walker is like right here. Lonnie Walker. Um, I think Lonnie Walker honestly could be an inflated numbers guy. Like on the right team, he could probably get some crazy numbers. But like, if he's just being a role player, he can be a key role player. You know what I'm saying? He's not a bad role player. He's like a he's a solid, good to great role player. He has, he's going to be just a little shaky. He's not going to be very consistent. 
You know what I'm saying? Grant Williams. I think Grant Williams is like a elite specialist where he's going to come in and play great defense and he's going to knock down shots. That's just really what he is, in my opinion. I think Grant Williams is just that good of a role player in what he's going to do. He's not going to be on the court to really do anything else but to knock down shots and play defense. That's pretty much his role. Sometimes they kind of ask him to do a little bit more, and that's just not what he is. But when it comes to what he does, he's a great he's a great shooter. He's not expected to shoot a lot. He's going to knock down the shots he does get, and he's going to play good defense. Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder is another uh, player that's really good. He's a tough one to uh, rank. Um, he's a good penetrator. Um, he can he, he really can mix the defense up with how good he can get to the rim. He's elite when it comes to role players that get into the rim. Um, he's not really the craziest distributor. He's a good defender, but he's better off the ball defensively. I would say Dennis Schroeder is like a key role player. I would put him at the top of key role player for now. Um, Nikola Jokic is firmly number one option. The best player in the world. Um, you could have debated it the past three years, but like it's not really a debate anymore. He should have he should have did the three peat this year. He had his best season regular season wise and he didn't get it. His team was best regular season wise, he didn't get it. And they they won the championship. He got that. I guess I, I guess you can say that. Malcolm Brogdon. Um, I think Malcolm Brogdon game kind of fell off in the playoffs, but like defensively, you could argue in the rotation for the uh, Celtics, he was the worst defender. But that's like, I'm going to be honest, like, I think he's still a high level role player. He's a great playmaker. Um, he's a great shooter. Um, he's not a bad defense defender. He's like an average defender. It's just the Celtics. I don't think people understand how good and well built the Celtics team was. Like their worst defender was Malcolm Brogdon, like. That's not a bad defender. He's a bad defender for the Celtics, but that's a great luxury to have. I don't think people understand that. I think Malcolm Brogdon is a great role player, but yeah. Um, and if he was on other teams, he would be an inflated numbers guy. But I don't think he would be a low impact. I think he could be, like, on the pages, that's what, really what he was doing, just getting great numbers. But, like, he's he should be more so, like, in a six-man, like, uh, uh, secondary ball handler type moral like he shouldn't be like uh, the best player on your team Andy Davis now Andy Davis is a tough one to rank because I thought for the playoffs this year he was the second best player in the playoffs because defensively he was by far the best defender in the playoffs now in the Nuggets series they kind of made that a little bit more apparent how much how important he really was to that team defensively but I don't know bro what are you talking about um Andy Davis is tough to rate because I want to say first option, but health has to have some impact on it. So, like, if health has some impact on it, I would have to say Anthony Davis is a two. And he would be behind Tatum because Tatum is, he's going to be more available. But if health wasn't an option, I would say he's kind of in that Tatum realm where he's a, he's a low one, high two. And he would be better than Tatum for me. But with the health being a with being a thing, I have to put him here. And in the regular season, he even he had his moments to start the season, but then he got hurt. Then he came back. He kind of wheeled him to the playoffs. After all those trades happened, when Braun was hurt, he kind of wheeled that team to the playoffs. A lot of people kind of swept that under the rug. They was talking about free throws, and all, but Andy Davis wheeled that team to the playoffs. And in the in the playoffs, he was the best player in the on their team by far. So. By far, maybe a stretch, but he was he was their best player for sure. Um, but yeah, yeah, he should be he should be second option. I don't see Braun. Oh, okay, so okay. I don't know why some of these people are on here twice, but we need to put Braun up here. We need to put Braun up here. Okay, Braun at this stage in his career is firmly firmly a second option the only thing about Braun, he really could be firmly a one option steal it's just like he's starting to get injured more um and if you want to say that like in the playoffs he was injured that's why his play kind of dropped off but Braun himself said he wasn't gonna come back until he was 100 percent. he took his time coming back um he took three weeks coming back and people was like what how long is he gonna be out um, he said he heard a pop, but he said he, he went to the LeBron of doctors. I don't really know how to feel about the LeBron situation. I don't know if he's, if he's hurt or not. Because in the playoffs, I was in shock of how athletic Braun still was. 
So if that wasn't fully healthy, Braun, that's crazy. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't really know how to speak on Braun. If he wasn't fully healthy, then I don't know. Because he started the year off bad, but then he had a great stretch in December and January. So I don't really know how to talk about Braun, bro, to re be real with you. I think Braun is really more so like low-end second option. He's going to be 39 years old. He was 38 this year. Um, it's only so much you can expect out of somebody this old, but he's still a top 10 player for sure. But it's like, again, I don't think it's only but a couple people that's a for sure a number one option. For sure. Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves. Gotta give it to him. He was a high level role player for the Lakers. He played in some, when, in, in the series, he gave them pretty much what they needed. In the Nuggets series, they needed another person that was consistently getting buckets for them, knocking down threes. He did that. In the uh, Grizzly series, he was like a spark plug that kind of could run the pick and roll for them. He did that. In the in the uh, Warriors series, they kind of needed him to do a little bit of everything, but mainly just more so play good defense. He did that. I'm going to be honest. He did. He kind of pretty much switched his role all three of those series, and he did, he did that well. Now, I think in the Nuggets series, they should have used him a little bit more on the ball. That would have been a big deal for them. But, hey, I think in every series, he did pretty much what they needed. Nah, I don't think so, bro. Um, it's not Jay McDaniels, but this is um Vanderbilt, Jerry Vanderbilt. I always get their names mixed up. Jerry Vanderbilt, I think this is the definition of an elite specialist. He's just out there to play defense. He's not really out there to do anything else. And he's one of the best defenders in the entire NBA. Um, Rui... Rui is tough to rank because as a role player, I would rather Rui than I would rather uh, Reeves. But I think Reeves is a better, I think Reeves is a better player. Nah, I don't even think I think that. Nah, that's Cap. That's, that was Cap. That was Cap. That was definitely Cap. That was definitely Cap. I think Reeves is just a better score, if that makes sense. I think that's really what I was trying to say right there, but that doesn't mean he's a better player. Um, D'Angelo Russell. Um, I kind of tried to tell Lakers fans that this is kind of what he was. I think he's an elite playmaker. When it comes to our role players, he's an elite playmaker. That's not really debatable. As a role player, he's definitely an elite playmaker. As a role player. Out of role players. Not talking about out of all the NBA players. Out of role players. But um, his just consistency scoring the ball is just a problem. Especially when you're going to have people like LeBron and now Austin Reeves getting more touches. This is going to be an issue. He's not going to get as many touches. And you don't really want him to. Like, it just doesn't work even when he has the touches. I said this. It was the same thing last year with the Timberwolves. He, he kind of trolled the series for the Timberwolves last year. And I said that was going to eventually come back to hunt the Lakers. Now, I do think if you can get him his role more defined offensively, he can be a good contributor. He can be a key role player. I, I would say he's more so in, in this range. But he is an elite playmaker. I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him there. I'm going to put him there. Um, Al Horford. Al Horford is another tough one to rank. But I think he's so important for this team. As a as a big man, he's one of the best three-point shooters in the league. And he's one of the best post defenders in the league. Very Two very important things. And Davis is not really a good post defender. He's a good rim protector that can switch out to smaller guards. But post, in the post, going against like a, a Jokic in the post, that's not really something that he's... That's not really his skill set. He's a rim protector, but, like, guarding the post is not really his thing. If you understand what I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying. But, yeah, um, Al Horford, I'm in between I'm in between elite specialist or high-level role player for a big man. I'm going to say, I'm going to just, I'm going to stick with this. Because he's pretty much Grant Williams, but but center. All right, Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is the epitome of a high-level role player. Where would I put him in high-level role player, though? I would put him... Yeah, I'll probably put him right here. I'll probably put him right here. That's that's not crazy. Robert Williams. 
I put Robert Williams like right here. He's a key role player. Um, great defender. Great defender. He's not as good of a defender as people make it seem like, but he is a good like shot blocker. He's a good um, he's a good help defender. But like, yeah, he's he's gonna play his role. He's like on offense, he's gonna be the dunker spot lob catcher. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna play his role. Delon Wright, right? Um, I think Delon Wright can be a pretty decent role player. I think he can be uh, a key role player. He can kind of be like in the in a in a um. Schroeder role, I feel like. I'd probably put DeLon right. Like. I'd probably put DeLon right right here. I'm not going to lie. Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz. Man, Markel Fultz is a tough one to rank because he had a really good year like this year. I think the Magic had a really underrated year for a lot of people. I don't think people understand how good the Magic really were this year. Um, I think they're gonna be a real. I think I see a lot of people hyping up the. Um, I see a lot of people hyping up the Thunder. I think I think the, I think the, the Magic are closer to what people are saying the Thunder gonna be next year. Um, I think they are gonna be neck and neck for having like the biggest jump in wins in my opinion. Um, but yeah, Markel Fultz. I'm about to say Markel Fultz is I'm about to say he's probably at the top. He's probably at the top. If fourth option was a thing, he probably would be there, but I'm gonna put them there. I'm gonna put him there. High level role player. He gonna do pretty much everything. He's gonna be a great playmaker, a good defender. Um, only thing he really can't do is shoot the ball that well, but he's a great penetrator. He's going to be able to draw the defense. He's a great passer. He can play good defense. Like He's going to pretty much do a lot of the things you want out of a point guard, I feel. Um, Jonathan Isaac. Um, Jonathan Isaac is the elite specialist. Like Defensively, you could argue when healthy, he's he's up there with the best of the best. Like With the Giannis, the Bams, the AD. Like, you could argue like he's a real, real deal lockdown defender. The only thing is, he's never healthy. So that has to mean something. Um, Dennis Smith Jr. I think Dennis Smith Jr. had a pretty good year this year. I think I, I'll put him in like goo guy. I'll put him in like goo guy. Monty Morris. Uh, it was cool to see him at the Nuggets game when they won, even though I'm a Heat fan. But hey, um, I would say Monty Morris. I would say Monty Morris is like right here. Ah, uh, no, nah, I'll say right here. I'll say right here. Wendell Carter. I like Wendell Carter a lot. I think Wendell Carter is like a slightly better version of Al Horford right now, except Al Horford may be a little bit better as a post defender, but Wendell Carter is a little bit better as like a switchable defender, a little bit better as like a, a rim protector right now. I think if, if we talk about a little bit younger Al Horford, then yeah, it wouldn't be close. But right now, I think Wendell Carter is a little bit better version of Al Horford is right now. Um, Wagner or Rich Wagner. I'm going I'm to put bro in like glue guy. Um, he's just a, a good backup big at this point. I don't know why you just said Ishmith better, but okay. Um, PJ Washington. I like PJ Washington a lot. I personally like PJ Washington a lot. I feel like he's a much better defender than giving credit. I think he can knock down the three ball. He's a pretty, he's one of the, he's one of the more underrated three and D wings in the league, in my opinion. In my opinion. I would have to say, I would have to say P.J. Washington is like right here. He's not as good of a defender as Vanderbilt, but he can, he's, he's, he's better on offense. And he's a, and he's a better playmaker than any of these guys. I would put P.J. Washington right there because actually, I'll probably put P.J. Washington at the back of role player because he can play make, he got a three ball, he's a good defender. I'll probably put him at the back of high level role player. That's probably where I would put him. Ball, ball. Bobo is a really, really tough person to rank. Because <laughs> Bobo should get minutes, but, like, he just doesn't. Bobo is tough to rank. I like Bobo a lot. I think he's a good rim protector, a good shot blocker. He can stretch the floor. Um, he's going to have his moments. He just doesn't get the consistent minutes. I think he's pretty efficient, too, to be honest. 
I don't know if they think he gonna get hurt. I don't know what it is. But I'm gonna put bro. I'm gonna put bro. I'm gonna put bro. I'm gonna put him key role player for now. But I think he should just I think he just needs more minutes, to be honest. Um What is this? I forgot, bro. Name. He played. For, he did. Uh, Daniel Gafford. Daniel Gafford. He's just a rim protector that can. That's a rim runner. I'm gonna put bro. I'm gonna put bro back here. He might be above Bobo. I haven't seen enough. All right, he's tough to rank. Um, he got. He got good playmaking. One of the better like wing defenders in the league. He can knock down some threes. He just need to get a little bit better touch, but I like him. I think, I think, I think, I think he's around. He may even be, he may even be up. He may be even higher, but he is on the Wizards, and I gotta be real. I gotta be real. He may, it may be gassed a little bit, but I like, I like him. I think, I think next year he's gonna be pretty decent. I think next year he's gonna be pretty decent. I think he kind of underrated because he's on a bad team, and he's a role player, and he has three people on his team that's averaging twenty. Um, Cole Anthony, Cole Anthony is the definition of an inflated numbers guy, low impact. That's the definition of Cole Anthony. Um, I like Cole Anthony, but like, that's just kind of what he is. It just is what it is. Um, low key. I need to lower that. Yeah, I need to lower that. Um, Franz Wagner. Okay, see, Franz Wagner is tough to rank. I think Franz Wagner is tough to rank because where I'm going to put him is where he should is where he is this is not a projection for next year i'm gonna do another one for projection for next year this is just where he is right now and where he was this season damn, damn bro, that's tough uh franz wadner is either right here or right here like he's either like really really low third option where Jalen Brown is like a high third option. Lucky, put Jalen Brown up there. I think I think Franz is like a, a low third option right now or a high, high level role player. It's one of the two. It's one of the two. Like, he's one of the two. He's like, he's like six foot ten, but he can play the, he can be the ball hitter in the pick and roll. He can be the roller in the pick and roll. He got the three, he got a good shot. He got a good mid-range. He's really good around the rim. Great defensively. He can guard literally run through four easily. I'm going to be honest, Franz Wagner is really, really nice. He's really, really nice. Really, really nice. And I know he's on the Magic, so a lot of people going to really underrate him. But I'm going to be honest, Celtics fans, y'all got it right now when it came to like when it comes to like well-developed teams coming up. But the Magic could really steal y'all show in a couple years. I'm trying to tell y'all. Jalen Suggs, I like Jalen Suggs too. I don't quite think he's like a high level role player yet though. I think he's really more so like a key role player and I'm gonna put him above like D lows and stuff like that. That's why I'll, I'll probably put him like right there for now. Uh Mark Williams. Mark Williams is a tough person to rank because he only has one year under his under his belt. Um, um Mark Williams is very tough to rank. I will be honest. Because like he only has one year, and he really wasn't getting a lot of PT. And even at the end of the year, when he started getting PT, a lot of those minutes came when um, Lamella Ball wasn't even playing anymore because he got hurt. So this is really, really tough to rank. I like him as a as a rim runner that can play great defense. Um, that's just kind of what he is right now, though. Um, I think he's a little bit better offensively and defensively than Robert Williams already. I'm not going to lie. I'd probably put him like right here, right here for now. I think he, he can definitely become something better. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Payalo, Payalo, I would have to say is obviously a third option. I would say France is better right now, but Payalo is easily going to be like in terms of who's going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest. I don't know who's going to be better. I'm going to be honest because they both going to be really good. I think they both have, I think they both have potential to be a number one on a championship team. I'm not going to lie. They both have a lot of potential. But I think Payalo is more likely to reach his potential where France could really just 
turn into like a low end number two or a high end three. But like that's gonna be able to have like a lot of like he's not gonna have really much weakness. I think Payalo is gonna have his weaknesses. Like his weaknesses that he has now, I think they're kind of be things that he can get a little bit better, but they're not gonna be like I don't think they're ever gonna become strengths, I would say. So like, yeah. Um, but the thing that Payalo is better at, he's probably a better three level scorer, but he's not as good of a three point shooter as France. Um, he's a, probably a better playmaker already, but he's not as good of a defender as France, like at all yet. Um, but yeah, he's definitely a better scorer. He's definitely a better playmaker. So yeah, that's 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 probably he probably better offensively right now. But France is just washing defensively, like it's not even close to me. Um, Bradley Beal, Bradley Beal. See, this is why I had this higher. Yeah, see, this is why I had this higher. Because niggas like Bradley Beal. Because this is... Yeah, this is... See, that was when it get crazy. Yeah, Bradley Beal is an inflated numbers guy, in my opinion, low impact. In my opinion. In my opinion. Um, I think this year, more so than anything ever, I think this year, more so than ever, you could say Bradley Beal was a high-level role player because he wasn't just trying to score. He was also playmaking. But, like, at the end of games, you don't want him to be your primary playmaker because he's he's liable to get, like, two or three turnovers at the end of the game in the clutch. Like, so, I, yeah, he, he's, like, he's like a screamer to me inflated numbers. That's going to probably be my hot take of this. I think there's a lot of people that y'all hate on that are on better teams that are better than Bradley Beal. But Bradley Beal just has a much more ele elevated role. But I think Bradley Beal as a three-level scorer is one of the best three-level scorers in the league. It's just, like... As a decision maker, he's just not like a he's not like a one or a two. I guess you could try to say Bradley Bill is a three. But I'm trying to think of what teams could Bradley Bill be a three on. I know people are gonna be like the Heat. I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, I'm trying to think of other teams. If he was a three on the Lakers, that may be good. If he was a three on the Lakers, that may be good, but like. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that would be... He'd be kind of just in a D-Lo role. He'd just be in D-Lo position where he'd probably get more touches than Reeves. But, like, that would be interesting. I'm going to be honest. That would be interesting. They did, like, a trade D-Lo. That would be interesting. Maybe they get the job done with that. I'm trying to think of teams that if he was a third option. Like, if he was a third option on the Celtics, would that make them that much better? Like, who would he replace? I guess he would have to, like, you would have to take off uh, Derek White and... Uh, Malcolm Brogdon, I'm guessing. I don't know. I guess he could be a third option on the championship team. I guess he could. I guess he could. I would personally say these two are probably better. But, hey, I guess he could. I would say he's either inflated numbers guy, low impact, or his third option. It's one of those. It's literally one of those. It's one of those. Kyle Kuzma. Um, low, low, inflated numbers is is him right now, but he's obviously since the twenty twenty season he's been he's become a better defender. So like I honestly don't think he's a low impact guy. He's like he's definitely got his numbers inflated being on a bad team though. I think the boys are gonna be a little underrated next year too because they got him. I think he's gonna be good, but I think if KP can keep that keep that going what he had last year. They could be a really interesting team too. They're gonna be not they're not gonna be like top five East or anything, but like they could sneak up on somebody. They could definitely sneak up on somebody. Um He's not a borderline star though. You know what I'm saying? And he's been a third option on the championship team before. He was the third he was the third best player on the Lakers. He was the third best player. You could argue Dwight Howard. You could argue some other players, but he definitely was the third scoring option, but that's not what I was basing it off of. But it was just so far and away, those were the two best players. So that's kind of a cheat. Like, if Bradley Bill was on the Lakers, it would be kind of the same thing, though. Those would be by far the two best players. For a lot of people, Jalen Brown wouldn't be that much better than... Uh, Bradley Bill. I've seen some some Celtics fans even say they would trade Jalen Brown for Bradley Bill. So that's that is a thing. That is a that is a choice. You know that is a choice. But I don't know. This just this probably makes a little bit more sense. I probably should do it like that. I think I think it's more so like this. I'm not gonna lie. I think it's more so like this. I'm not gonna lie. Um, 
But I'm gonna put it like this. And I'm gonna put him right here. KBZ. I think Porzingis is easily a third option, like third best player on the team. He can't be like a number two, like where he was on the Mavericks, and he's playing out of his role. Like, if he was going to be a number two, it would have to be perfect. Like, it would have to be the perfect role where, like, there's a number three set in place that's just as good as him, but not better. And that number one has to be, like, by far, like, a number one. Like, he can't be, like, a low tier to a high tier second. Like, it can't be something like that. It has to be a, per like, a number one option. But I think for a fact, KBZ could be a third option. It's just like with AD, health. The health is a big deal with him, but he was healthy this year. Um... Jovic didn't really play this year, so I'm going to have to play him a bench warmer. But in the spurts that he did play, he was kind of out of position, so I don't even know how to even really rank that. I'll put him bench warmer. He definitely should have probably got more minutes than, like, a Cody Zeller, Deadman, but, like, yeah. Terry Rozier is the definition of an inflated numbers guy. You can go whoever you think is better. I guess I'll put him over. Um, John Collins. Uh man. John Collins, I'm putting you right there with D'Angelo Russell, bro. Extremely overrated. Trey Young. This may piss some people off. But if I'm being 100% honest, yeah, I think Jalen Brown got to go up second option. Because either, bro, bro, Jalen Brown and Trey Young are both like, either low second options or high third options. I think they're more so third options, though. I'm not going to lie. I think they're more so third options. I'm going to put them third options. Um, DeAndre Hunter. Um, I think DeAndre Hunter is like a... He's definitely either a key role player or a high role player. He's a 3 and D player that can he can he can do a little bit more so as a three level score than a, a lot of than most three and D players he just isn't allowed or asked to do so so that's a thing but I probably have to say he's not really a good playmaker I'm gonna be honest DeAndre Hunter really could turn into like a, a, a off brand Jalen Brown he's not really a good playmaker but he can score at all three levels he's pretty athletic he's a good defender you know what I'm saying? Even though Jalen Brown may have got a little bit worse defensively this year, especially as the year went on. But, yeah, DeAndre Hunter, he could kind of turn into, like, an off-brand Jalen Brown when it comes to, like, what he can do offensively. Because he's not – I don't think he's ever going to become, like, a good playmaker or a good dribbler. But, like, he can score at all three levels. I don't know if he if he can get it to that level. But, like, like I said, off-brand. Not quite Jalen Brown, but, like, an off-brand, like, not the version, but a worse, worser version of, if that makes sense. So I can see, I can see him being like right here. I can see him being like right there, high level role player. But I'm probably have to put him like. I'm gonna probably have to put him like here, in all actuality. Lamelo. See, Lamelo is a very, very tough person to rank because I think he shoots the three ball. He has the size and length. To make up for how bad he is defensively but he shoots the three ball he's a great passer that he could definitely be a third option you know what i'm saying if bradley bill can be a third option lamello definitely can be a third option it's just what are those other two players you know what i'm saying like if his other two players is luca he can't be a third option you know what i'm saying he couldn't be he wouldn't be able to be a third option in that situation it had to be like two bigs it had to be like a wing and a big so it'd probably be like a Tatum and like an Embiid. Like, that would be like the perfect one and two for him. That would be like the perfect one and two for him. So, like, yeah, he could be a third option, but, like, he would literally have to play with two superstars. So, like, yeah, I would put LaMelo right there. I will put him right there. That's why I'm, like, kind of leaning on putting Bradley Bill more so in inflated numbers. But he's definitely – if Bradley Bill was on a different team – I think he would definitely be like a high level role player because he's a good three three level scorer and he can play make. It's just like you don't want him to be your go to guy at the end of a game, in my opinion. That's just not what you want him to do. So maybe I'm rating him too much based off of him being a number one. 
Yeah, maybe I'm just rating him too much off that. Um, I call bro Baby Bam. I've called him that since the draft. Bro played with Lamelo and Lonzo and all them in high school. Chino Hills. I like bro though. I really do like bro. I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him right there with Al Horford. He hasn't, he hasn't played enough, I feel, to really get any higher than that. So I'm going to put him right there. I think Al Horford had too many good moments when it came to defending uh, Bam, defending um, Embiid. I can't really put him any higher than that. I can't really put him any higher than that. I may even be trolling with this, not going to lie. But nah, he's actually a better version right now. And he's played enough. He was literally a starter. Kai Jones, Hornets, my Hornets fan in the chat. I'm finna disrespect the guy. Um, from what I've seen, he's a very athletic, tall guy that plays really well with LaMelo, but LaMelo gets the most out of him, really, more so than anything. So I would have to say he's either bottom glue guy or bench warmer. I'm gonna put him bench warmer. This is a dude that should play more, but, like, I don't know where I'm supposed to put him, like, I don't know. He doesn't play enough. Like, I don't even know where to put him even based off where he played. He didn't play really much at all this year. Um, Jalen Johnson for the uh, for the Hawks. Another person that I think that... Hey, the Hawks, I'm going to be honest. The Hawks do really... They have a really good team around Trey Young. Like, a really good supporting cast. Like, a lot... I'm going to be honest. There's a lot of really good supporting cast in the league. Like, it's a lot of really good ones, to be honest with you. Um, this is a guy that, like... Uh, power forward, small forward, like he can he's pretty decent. Especially as a young guy. But he didn't he doesn't get enough PT yet. So I'm gonna put him right down here with the with the Lonnie's, the Daniel Gaffers, the Bow Bowls and stuff like that. I think he's better than Daniel Gafford, I'm not gonna lie. Um this is the Griffin dude. He's pretty good too. He should get more minutes. I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him right there with him, but I'm gonna put him above him. Um Wesley Matthews. Wesley Matthews is a good key role player. I'm gonna put him right there with DeLon Wright. Um Click Capella. I may be tripping on this. I may be tripping on this. I'm not going to lie. Clint Capella. Clint Capella is a high-level role player, but wearing high-level role player. Clint may be at the top. Clint may be at the top. He's either at the top of high-level role player, or he's an elite specialist. I think since he does three things at an elite rate, like he's an elite rim runner. He's an elite rim protector. Well, not elite rim protector, but he's a great rim protector. And he's an elite rebounder. That's not debatable. He's an elite rebounder for sure. I'm gonna put him at I'm gonna put him at the top of high level role player. I'm gonna put him right here. I think I would rather these two as my role players more so than Clint Capella because you can kind of exploit his weaknesses a little bit easier than these two. Actually, no, you can exploit his weakness more so than his. So yeah, that's a that's a better order in my opinion. Honestly, I'm moving bro down again. I'm moving bro behind Rui. Because you can exploit his weaknesses a little bit more than him. A little bit more. Um, Brooke Lopez. Brooke Lopez is is a tough one to rank. Because he could go as high as this or as low as this. But if he went here, he goes here. I'm going to put him there. Because his weakness is literally drop coverage. Like, you can attack his drop coverage. But, like, and you don't really want Brooke Lopez going out guarding good guards and stuff like that. But, like... He's a good post player offensively and defensively. He's a good scorer um, on offense. He's a good rim protector. Like, he's elite at a lot of things. Like, yeah, nah. I think his how many things he's elite at for his position, he definitely has to be. Like, I think Brooke Lopez could even go as high as this. Not going to lie. No, 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 no. I think he could go as high as this. Like, not going to lie. I think Brooke Lopez could really go that high. Brooke Lopez is really nice. I'm going to be honest. Brooke Lopez of the Lakers? Come on, bro. Brooke Lopez on the Lakers? Come on. Brooke Lopez on a lot of teams would be, like, huge. Brooke Lopez in a Al Hofer role on the, on the Celtics? That would be a big deal. I, bro, I'm going to be honest. Brooke Lopez on a lot of teams. Like, he would, he would drastically transform teams. Like, drastically. I'm going to be honest. Only certain teams where they kind of do need a rolling big more so than a popper. Would it not be as in today's? Like, just think about Brooke Lopez with a healthy Zion on the Pelicans. Come on, bro. Especially with B.I., that's going to make B.I. be able to get more driving lane. Like, come on, bro. 
Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Brooke Lopez on a lot of teams would make those teams very interesting, to be honest with you. Um, Chris Middleton. This year, Chris Middleton was not that good, in my opinion. I'll have to put Chris Middleton down. I'm not going to go too stupid on you, game, But, like, yeah, you got to go, like, right here. Um, Bobby Portis. Bobby Portis was pretty good this year, in my opinion. I'll put Bobby, Bobby Portis, like, right here. I'll put Bobby Portis, like, right there. I'll put him, like, right there. We probably need to lower some of these guys. Because that, that road getting a little too stacked. now that's probably what it's gonna be like for now um Sadiq Bay Sadiq Bay is a tough one to rank I like Sadiq Bay I like Sadiq Bay a lot but it's something that's just telling me he's not a high level role player at all so I'm gonna just stick with my gut and say key key role player and I'm gonna say I'm going to say right there. Boyan Badanovich. Boyan Badanovich got to go up here. He's like... He's probably right here. I think Bobby Porter's was a better role player this year. DeJounte Murray. Um, yeah, DeJounte Murray is another one of those guys that can be a third option. I would put DeJounte Murray right there between LaMelo and Bradley Beal. I think DeJounte Murray is better than Trey Young. But... I don't think you would. I think teams would build a team around Trey Young more so than Dejounte Murray because of the skill set. Like Trey Young is elite in multiple phases. He's an elite pick and roll player. He's an elite playmaker. But Dejounte Murray is not really elite at really anything. You know what I'm saying? Trey Young is also an elite foul baiter. He's also an elite shot creator. Dejounte Murray is just not really elite at anything. He's just a good balanced player. You know what I'm saying? He can shoot the three. He can play make. He can play defense. He can drive. Like, he's, he's just a balanced player, in my opinion. Like, he has weaknesses, but, like, they're not, like, nowhere near as crazy as Trey Young. Um, Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward's really main issue is staying healthy. But I think Gordon Hayward, as a role player, is literally, like, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, Derek White is really playing that role. That's kind of cap. Because Gordon Hayward would have been a lot better if Gordon Hayward stayed healthy. But, like, he's kind of filling that gap that, that he kind of left, I guess you could say. But he would be way better. If he never got hurt, he would be way better. Um, Kelly Oubre. Kelly Oubre is interesting to rank. Um, I think he's the definition of an empty stat guy, though. Low impact. Um, I'm not going to lie. He's been that for a couple years now. I'm not going to lie. He's still in the league. So, shout out to bro. But he actually be, he kind of be hooping. Like, he kind of be hooping. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Miles Turner. I think of Miles Turner of, like, anti brook Lopez, where, like, people think they do the same thing, but they don't really do the same thing. Like, he, he shoots this three, like, a certain percentage, but he's way more inconsistent three-point shooting-wise than Brooke Lopez. Like, he, his stats say he's a crazy good rim protector, but, like, he hunts for a lot more blocks than Brooke Lopez. So, like, it's kind of different. Like, it's kind of different. So, like, you kind of just got to see how he plays to really understand what I'm saying. Um, but Miles Turner, I think a lot of teams would love to have a Miles Turner on their team. Like, the Lakers would love a Miles Turner. The Heat would love a Miles Turner. But, like, what he is is, like, not the same. Like, he's not nowhere near the post defender he, uh, Brooke Lopez is. He's nowhere near the post player that Brooke Lopez is. But what he lacks, he makes up for in athleticism. He's way more athletic than Brooke Lopez. That's just not even a debate. Way more athletic. So, I would put Miles Turner, like, right here. I may be tripping on some of these. I'm not going to lie. Looking at it. Yeah. That make a little bit more sense. Yeah, that make a little bit more sense. No, that make a little bit more sense to me. I'm not going to lie. Okay. Um... This may should go like this. Because Denny hasn't proven it enough, but I think Denny going to be pretty. He was pretty good. He just needs the minutes. He didn't get the minutes consistently until the end of the year. So Denny may should go down. 
because he didn't get the minutes consistently. That's just kind of inconsistent. I'm kind of got a bias. Um, Buddy Hill, elite shooter, elite three point shooter, one of the best shooters in the league. Um, yeah, elite, elite three point shooter. Um, James Wiseman, he probably should be a bench warmer. To be honest. Um, he he can get stats, but it's like the impact is so bad. Oh no 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 no! He's an inflated numbers guy. You know he's an inflated numbers guy. He's very very low impact, negative impact if anything, negative impact. Um, Tyrese Halliburton. Tyrese is tough. Tyrese is tough because he's pretty much he pretty much like a better version of Trey, but plays better defense. Okay, I got a question. If you're a Celtics fan, would you take Tyrese Halliburton on the Celtics in replace of Jalen Brown? I want y'all to think on that one for me. I'm a, I I personally, if I was building a team, I'd rather Jalen Brown. But if they were on the same team, that would kind of be probably better because Jalen Brown doesn't really need to be – he doesn't really need to be the one or two option with the ball. He needs to be like an off-ball player. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, yeah. I think Ty. I take. I would. Ta I would definitely take Tyrese over um, Trey Young. Me personally, I think he's just a better shooter and a better passer. Um, Trey Young is probably better in the pick and roll, like a pick and roll ball handler. But like, he's probably better at drawing fouls, better scorer, all that type of stuff. But like, I rather Tyrese Halliburton, former point guard, than Trey Young personally. Um, Bro, I don't even think he plays for the Magic no more. I think he plays for the Pistons now. He's more like a glue guy. I'm going to put him right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah, right there. Jalen Smith. I'm, I like Jalen Smith, but he hasn't really shown much. I'm going to put him at the top of glue guy for now. I don't really know too much to really put him too high. Another person that, like, yeah, like you, I keep thinking he's gonna be something Isaiah Stewart, I, but he just hasn't really shown it yet. So I'm gonna put him glue guy. I like him a lot. See, I may need to have a potential tier because some of these young guys need to be in potential. Like he's potential. Like he's potential. Jay Nivey. Like I see a lot of people coming to the game with that D baby D Wade like comparison, but like Jay Nivey screams it. Like you watch him play, he screams it. Like it's crazy. Like he got that. Quick burst. He's not a terrible defender. He's not the greatest defender, but he's not a terrible defender. And, like, he even got a little midi, but around the rim, he's really nice. And he's not as bad of a three-point shooter as people would make it out to seem. He's actually not a bad three-point shooter at all. Um, Jaden Ivey, I like his game. I like his game a lot. I'm going to put Jaden Ivey. Nah, we we literally need a potential tier. Like, literally. Add a row below. Yeah, we literally need a potential tier. Potential, no cap. Okay, so yeah, Jaden Ivey, you're going to go potential. Is there anybody else I can put in potential? I'm going to put Jovic in potential. I'm going to put him in potential. Um, I'm going to put him in potential. I'm going to put Jovic over him, potential-wise. Only people I'm putting in, in potential is people that's key role player and lower. If you already an elite, all this above, you ain't even got to really move, to be honest. See, like, he already third option, so, like, it's no point in me moving him. See, I'm going to just put it like that. Um, I'll throw these guys in here. I throw these guys in here. I like those guys. I like him. Potential wise, I like him. Potential wise. That's it. I don't think. Oh no 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 no! I gotta throw him in potential too. Okay, that's it. All right. Okay, Benedict McDarlin. Benedict McDarlin was already kind of like an inflated numbers guy. Like all, it's kind of funny. He was already like an inflated numbers guy. Like already. Kind of low impact, inflated numbers. He was gonna get his buckets. He was kind of already that. I'm gonna be honest. 
Oh. I don't really know where to put, bro. See, like, Jaden Ivey was really tough to put because I don't think he's, like, a high-level role player or anything, but I don't think he's a third option already, you know? So, potential made sense for me. But Bennett McDarlin is, like, screaming inflated numbers guy. And I said I'm going to put, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm going to just put him there for now. For now. He still got potential, though. He's obviously only a rookie year. Um, this is the dude from the Pistons. Now, he's supposed to be better than Mark Williams. I think it's Jalen Duran. I haven't really seen. I've seen more out of Mark Williams. Now, I only seen Mark Williams like maybe five games. I only seen Duran like two or one game. And that's when he played the Heat. So, I'm not watching Pistons games. I just watched all the Heat games. So, that's the only time I had a chance. So. They say he got more potential than uh, Mark Williams, but I know I've seen it for a fact, and I and I call bro baby bam. So like, he's gonna go down below him. But everybody else, you can you can say that yeah. Um, my Donovan, I think my Donovan's had a pretty decent year this year. I think he, you can say he's inflated numbers guy, but like the way he plays is not, it's not, it's not giving you inflated numbers. I think my Donovan can be a really good player on a good team. Like uh, he could be a really good role player, you know. Um, I think he could play that Malcolm Brodden role in a lot of teams. Where he's probably the worst defender, but he's not a bad defender. But he's going to score the ball, and he's going to shoot the ball really well. And he's not a bad playmaker. You know what I'm saying? He's not terrible. Like He can be kind of like an off-brand Ma Malcolm Brodden on a lot of teams, in my opinion. I would, I would put I would put him like right there in high-level role player. I think I think Brodden is a really, really, it could be a really good role player on a lot of teams. LaMelo should be higher? Nah. Nah. Um, Giannis, come on. Um, going into the playoffs, a lot of people were saying he was the best player in the world. Um, I even was saying that. Looking back on that Jimmy series, like I dropped in the video today, that, or the time you were recording this, you could kind of look at that either as Jimmy trolled them, Jimmy fluke, or whatever you want to say. I don't really know what to really call that, but like, yeah. Um, yeah, Giannis is still in that best player on the championship caliber team tier um i don't think he really has a number two or a number three option on his team though spoiler alert i will say that um well yeah drew holiday is a third but like they don't they have like two threes at most um yeah tj mcconnell i like tj mcconnell i think tj mcconnell is right here he's right there with al Horford. that makes sense he's right there with al Horford. Uh, Marvin Badley. He's a hero here. I, I'm not gonna lie. He's either, yeah, I'll put him there. Uh, Killian Hayes. Um, Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen. Grayson Allen was pretty a pretty high level role player for the uh, Bucks. I think Bobby Portis was a more important role player. But Grayson Allen. I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him key. I'm gonna put him key role player because if they had DeAndre Hunter in that role, that would be much better. Yeah, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put Grayson Allen. I think Grayson Allen was better than Chris Middleton. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Pat Connaughton. I think Pat Connaughton was better than Chris Middleton. I'm not gonna lie. Jay Crowder. Yeah, bro, you gotta go down here. You gotta go down there, gay. I think he's still a key role player, but like, he's just really on there to play defense. Really, honestly. Um, Drew Holiday, I think Drew Holiday is a uh, third. You can be, he can be your third best player, but it's really just off defense. He's not, he's not as versatile as the people above him. But like, he's arguably the best perimeter defender in the league. Like I said, I think Jimmy kind of gonna troll his reputation a little bit. But if anything, I think that's gonna motivate Drew Holiday to come back next year and be even better defensively. So that's gonna be interesting. I think still to this day, if that Nuggets series would have been the Bucks Nuggets, that could have been an all-time NBA Finals, man. Just think about it. Jamal Murray, Drew Holiday, Giannis roaming the paint, <laughs> roaming off of Al Aaron Gordon, roaming the paint. Brooke Lopez, the best post defender in the league, guarding Jokic. That could have been a really good. That could have been a really good series, man. That could have been a really good series. The Heat kind of trolled us out of a lot of series that could have happened. I'm not gonna lie. Even as a Heat fan, I'm saying that. Joe Ingles. Joe Ingles. Um. <laughs> um, um 
Karis Levert, I'm not going to even troll you on this one. Karis Levert is like down here. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I am fucking trolling with this shit, though. <laughs> that shit is so fucking disrespectful, nigga. I'm not gonna lie, that is so disrespectful to John Collins. Like that is so disrespectful. I think in a better team on a better on a better role, he could be a little bit better. But he wasn't that. Be he wasn't better. He wasn't better last year. He just wasn't better. So I can't even do that. Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. You can't even spell shut yo. So you need to you need to learn how to spell a game. Anyways, Donovan Mitchell. Um. Donovan Mitchell is another one that's tough to rank. I don't think you want. I don't, bro. Donovan Mitchell, your best player on your championship team, throw the team away. Especially this year version. Second year, you can get away with him being your second option. I'm gonna be honest. You probably could get away with that. He was pretty good offensively. Defensively, he's terrible. But like when he's your first option, scoring wise, and he's your second best player, that's not really it either. Like he's gonna shoot too. He can shoot you out of games too many times, especially in playoff, in a playoff scenario. Yeah, I, I'm not really messing with Donovan Mitchell as my number one scoring option, even if he's my second best player. So like, yeah, I would have to say, I have to say D. Mitch is like top of third option, cause you want you want him at most being your second scoring option, cause like. I'm gonna be honest, like he's not giving you much defensively. So like <laughs> he's gonna have to be like your third option. Cause you're gonna have to have two other players that's better than him on like in terms of an overall player to be like actually good enough. There's not too many players in the league better offensively than D Mitch. But like the way he his game is, like, it's not suited. His game is just not suited to being a first option. Scoring wise, he's just not. He's short, you know what I'm saying. Um, he's not really that good off the ball either, though. So like, yeah, it's going. Yeah, so, Cavs got an interesting situation. When I'm saying borderline star, I'm saying star in their role game. I'm not really saying like. I'm not really saying like he's like literally like a, a all star caliber player, which I think uh, I'm gonna be honest. I think they're I think Derek White, uh, Grayson, uh, Gordon Hayward, fully healthy, they like right there on that cusp. To be honest with you, I'm not gonna lie, they're that good overall players. Uh, Jared Allen, Yeah, I was finna disrespect the shit out of Jerry Allen. Um, put bro here. Put bro there. Put bro there. I was finna disrespect the hell out of Jerry Allen. Well, I was finna put bro with uh, Robert Williams. I was finna be crazy. Um, Gary Trent Jr. I like Gary Trent Jr., but like... He's at most like right there. Yeah. Kobe White, Kobe White, not bad. He just down here though. All right, hold on, hold on. We need to, we need to minimize this a little bit. Let's go. Yeah, let's go there. All right. How much left we got? God damn. All right, we need to speed this up. P Dub, Patrick Williams. I think Patrick Williams deserves a little bit bigger role, but I don't think he's gonna get that with Levine and DeMar DeRozan on his team. But he's he has a pretty good three level scoring game right now. Like his mid range is pretty good, and he's a good defender. He may not be as good a defender as people was expecting, but he's a pretty good defender already. I'm gonna be honest. P Dub, I'd say P Dub is. I dear, I'm not gonna lie. I say B Dub is like right there. Ayo Dusumu, Ayo 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 Ayo. 
Hey, yo, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I like him, though. I like him. He fits in on that Bulls team really well, in my opinion. Um, I think he, he actually has a good fit. Him, Lonzo, Caruso all have a really good fit. Now, when they're all healthy, is the fit crazy? Not really. Not really. But especially now that they have Patrick Beverly, too, the fit is not crazy. But, like, for what the Bulls kind of need and what they want with their stars, those, those guys kind of fit perfectly around those two stars. I'm going to be honest. So, Io, I would say, is right here. Um, Evan Mobley. Kind of easily right there. One of the best defenders in the entire league. Has a... As an offensive game that has a lot that's left to be desired, to be honest. I don't know. His offense is, like, not really utilized well in that Cavalier system. Especially with Donovan Mitchell being the number one scoring option. So, I don't really know how to feel about his offense. But, I, defensively, one of the best defenders in the league, easily. Um, DeMar DeRozan. Ooh-wee. DeMar DeRozan. I'd say the Marta Rosen is. <sighs> Nigga, I was gonna go so crazy. Okay, the Marta Rosen on the Lakers would be good. Like, as a third scoring option, that would be pretty good for him. But the thing is, his holes are still huge holes. He can't shoot the three ball. He's a terrible defender. Not a good playmaker. Actually, he's okay playmaker. But he's not good. So, like, yeah, we finna disrespect gang. I'm not gonna lie. We finna disrespect the fuck out of bro. Um, I put DeMar DeRozan over Gordon Hayward because he's healthy. Yeah, we just gonna throw bro in inflated numbers, low impact guys, cause I'm not putting bro under Evan Mobley and Derek uh, Derek White. I'm just not doing that. That's just not real life. I'm not doing that. Um, Nikola Vucevic. Vucevic wasn't even that bad this year in my opinion. I'm gonna still put him in key role player, but like he wasn't even that bad for real. I put him right there, Rob. I put him right there. Um, Andre Drummond. Actually, nah. Andre Drummond is an elite rebounder. Like, <laughs> he's probably still the best rebounder in the league. Like, not gonna lie. It's either him or Jokic. You could argue either one. That's on you. I'd probably rather Jokic because Jokic can actually stay in the game because he's so good at everything else. But yeah, that's on you. Pascal Siakam. Pascal Siakam is an interesting one to rank because Raptors fans for sure would say he's like a, he's for sure a second option. I don't think that though. I think Pascal Siakam is quite easily right here. But I could be tripping on that. I'm not mad if you're saying he go he deserves right here. But it's like, it's one of those. I'm going to be honest. It's one of those. It is one of those. Lonzo Ball. Um, Lonzo Ball is the definition of a high-level role player. He just never healthy. I'm putting him, Lonzo has to be at the back of high-level role player. He's literally just never healthy. Alex Crusoe is a high-level role player, but where would we put him? Put him right there with the Marcus Smarts of the world. <clears throat> All you Lakers fans had to do that. Uh, Patrick Beverly. Um, Zach Levine. Zach Levine is a tough one to rank. Because he does a little bit more than De DeMar DeRozan, in my opinion. I think his game is more suited to being a third option in today's game than DeMar DeRozan. Um, he can score at all three phases quite easily. Great mid-range, great three-pointer, great around the rim. 
Um, defense is not even as bad as he used to be. He's getting better at defense. I I I I I I give I give Zach Levine right here. I give him right there. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. I'm trying my hardest to rank these in order. Uh, Derrick Jones Jr. You're a glue guy. You're a glue guy. Um, Darius Garland. Now Darius Garland is a very interesting runner rank. Darius Garland is a very interesting runaway. I think Darius Garland on a championship caliber team would, is, is a better player for a championship team. For a championship team. For a championship team, he is a better player for Trey Young. I think Darius Garland is a better pick and roll player. I think Darius Garland is not as good foul baiting. He's not as good of a scorer, but he's a better shooter. He's a better passer. That's just me. I mean, I could be wrong in your eyes. That's on you. Let me know. Let me know in the comments down below. I would rather Darius Garland on my team more so than Trey Young. Personally, I would. I just would. Um, I just would. Um, I think I think the Cavs are kind of trolling them because they're trying to make Donovan Mitchell something he's not. I think Donovan Mitchell needs to develop an off-the-ball game. He needs to develop more of a secondary ball handler game, more of a secondary playmaker game because Darius Garland is just much better with the ball in his hands than Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell is a much better scorer, but Darius Garland... His IQ is just better. He just, he just, he just, he just better as the actual main distributor. Now, is it smart to have two non-defensive players as your backcourt in today's back game? No, especially when you got to beat a team like the Celtics. Especially when you got to beat a team like the Bucks. But that's really a topic for another day for the Celtics. And I'm not a Celtics fan, so that's on y'all. That's not my problem. Um, Isaac Okoro, I think Isaac Okoro is like down here. Um, Seti Osman, you're like. You're like right here with your buddy right here, you know. You're right here with your buddy. Um, Kate Cunningham. Kate Cunningham didn't really play this year, so we're just going to throw you right there for now. Um, Yaka Poro. Yaka Poro. Yaka Poro. We're going to throw you at the back of there. OG Ananobi. OG Ananobi is easily a high-level role player, but we're a high-level role player. I would rather OG Ananobi over all these guys. Over all of them. Over all of them. Over all of them. Like, in a heartbeat. Over all of them. All of them. Um, Chris Boucher. I was trying to think of his name for that long time, but I, it just was not coming to me. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to rank you. I'm just putting you in key role player. It's too many people left. We got to get through this. Um, the, the Anthony Melton, I like the Anthony Melton this year. I'm going to put you at the back of uh, this. I'm going to put you ahead of the people that's injured. But I like the I like Anthony Melton this year. I think he was a... Actually, the Anthony Melton is definitely a 3 and D player. He's, th he's 3 and D through and through. We're going to put the Anthony Melton above Grant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going to do it like that. Because I think in terms of three-point shooting, I think... Buddy Hill is a little bit more elite than Jonathan Isaac is at defense. But I don't think D'Anthony Melton is like a top three, three and D player. Or top five. Is he? Let me know. I don't know. That may be, that may be a hot take. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I actually like this dude, but I'm going to put him. Um, hey, he was hooping. He was hooping this year. I personally thought they should have traded Julius Randle last year. And they should have gave him and quickly more minutes. Um, Jalen Bronson was a great pickup, though. Ended up working out for the for the uh, Knicks. I still, to this day, think they should trade Julius Randle. Um, while the iron is hot, they definitely get more this year than they would last year. So maybe they can make that deal, that make, make that move happen. I don't know why I'm seeing Knicks fans say they want Damian Lillard, but okay. <laughs> Y'all need wings. Y'all got enough guards, man. Y'all need wings. Y'all need wings and bigs. Y'all definitely need bigs. Like, I get it. Hardenstein and Robinson, they, 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 y'all love them. But, like, y'all need, if y'all can get, like, an actual big, like a top five big, y'all looking nice. Right. Um, but, yeah, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, bro, I'm gonna put, bro, 
Said all that, and I'm gonna put bro behind Chris. I'm gonna put him behind John Collins, actually. Tyrese Maxey. All right, Tyrese Maxey is very tough to rank because he's either right here. He's either right here. No, that's where he is. That's just where he is. That's literally just where Maxi is. That's just literally where Maxi is. I'm sorry. That's just literally where Maxi is. Like, I can't even put him any higher than that. Quickly. Now, quickly, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Call me crazy. Call me crazy. If I can package Jalen Bronson and Julius Randle for, like, I don't know, like a real number two option. I may do that if I'm the Knicks, cause I know it's tough. Like if I can get like an ant, a person that can become maybe a number one or a number two, like a person that had the potential to become something that's in that realm, I may do that. Cause I like quickly a lot. I like quickly a lot. I just don't think you trade Jalen Bronson just to get off Julius Randle. I don't know if you do that. I don't know if you do that. That's kind of crazy. Jalen Bronson showed that he's like through and through. You need to keep him in the, after what he did in the playoffs. So I think you kind of keep him. I think I think the when it came to the best people that played against uh, the Heat, performance-wise, consistency-wise, it was Jokic at the top, and then it was Jalen Bronson. Then it was Giannis. Then you can say like Tatum and whoever else you want to say. But Jalen Bronson, he outplayed in terms of players that went against the Heat. Giannis, Tatum, Jalen Brown, Jamal Murray. He outplayed a lot of people. So, yeah. I never said they would actually trade Jalen Bronson. They would be crazy to trade Jalen Bronson. But if I can get like a... Man, I'm not going to lie. If I'm, the, if I'm the Knicks and I can trade Jalen Bronson and Julius Randle and get like a Tatum, that's never happening. Even if like the Celtics are never doing that. But, like, if I can get, like, an ant, I don't know, man. I'm thinking about it, man. I'm definitely thinking about it. I can get, like, a D-book. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, bro. Emmanuel quickly. I like Emmanuel quickly because he's not just on one end. He's on both ends, and he's really good on both ends. He's one of the quickest players in the league, so he's gonna be good. ISO, he's gonna be good pick and roll. He's a decent distributor. He's a good shot creator already. I like quickly a lot, man. I like I like quickly a lot, man. I'm not gonna lie. I think in the playoffs he really wasn't that good, but he's young, so like I don't even know how to really rate that. So I would have to say quickly because in the playoffs he wasn't that good. I'll put him right here with the Clint Capellas, right behind the Ruiz. But I think he is just a better, for the full season, he was better. I think you can argue people like Reeves. Nah, Reeves probably actually should just be up here. I'm not going to lie. Reeves actually should just be up there. I'm not going to lie. Like, he, like, those two probably just should actually be up there. But, hey, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, P.J. Tucker is the definition of a role player. I'm putting you in Google Guy, though. Like, I'm going to be honest. The Heat, people don't really understand, but, like, Heat last year for the entire playoffs was playing 4-5 on five every possession. And we were doing that with two non-three-point shooting players in Bam and Jimmy. And we made it to Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, I don't think people understand how hard that is to do. Very hard. Very hard. I'm going to be honest with you. The 76 had way, way better star. And... Way better team overall, way better shooting overall, and they didn't even make it to where we got. Now they did have a worse coach as well, but hey, that's not that's not good for my agenda. But uh, Derrick Rose, um, um, but Derrick Rose, I guess he's a bit warmer because he didn't really play that much this year. Only reason I'm saying PJ Tucker is glue guy because that's like the epitome of what he is, though, like a glue guy. Like he's the perfect. Role player, the perfect glue guy. Like he's gonna do a lot of the little little things. Like he's not gonna do like the big stuff. He's gonna do the little things really well. Um, Will Barton. 
Will Barton. Yeah, nah, we're lower in this nigga. I'm not gonna lie. Will Barton. Uh, we're throwing you at. Uh, nah, that's too disrespectful. Put him right there with Karis LeVert. Julius Randle. Man. Knicks fans, I don't even know how y'all deal with this shit. I'll be honest, regular season, this nigga was like a. He was like a. E, like, regular season? He like right here with um Pascal Siakam. It's just like, bro. You know he gonna do it in the playoffs. Like, he's not gonna do that in the playoffs. Like,. Like, bro, he's literally, like, the definition of, uh, definition of an inflated numbers guy. I think, he, I, and the crazy thing is, I think Julius Randle could be such a good player, an impactful player, in a in a different system where he was off the ball a lot more and they was creating, like, a lot easier looks for him off the ball. But in this isocentric offense where they're trying to get him post up for mid-range faders, three-point iso faders or not faders but just shooting niggas like step back like shots like no bro that's not that's not what you want Julius Randle to do like so like it's kind of unfair like it's really kind of unfair because he's developed his game to become a a, a, a really decent three-point shooter a decent mid-range scorer good around the rim a good defender but it's like they just really like overdo him like they literally get too much out of him like they give him they pretty much give him false expectations so i would say if i'm honestly ranking him fairly he should be like right here or maybe even right here bro nah nah that's too far but yeah Julius Randle is like a really, really high level role player, borderline star. They just bro, they get the most out of him and he they kind of make him do too much. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I feel. Um Okay. Joel and B. Joel and B is a very, very tough person to rank because again, um, he has the injury issues of Anthony Davis, but he like he gets hurt every year at the worst time of the year. Like he gets hurt in the playoffs every year, like every single year. Like it's crazy. It's actually crazy. So like, I think he's better than A and D Davis, but he wasn't better in the playoffs. I would have to say Julius jo Joel Embiid is a second option because he just gets hurt at the wrong time of the year. But he's a better player than everybody that is below him. But like, when he's on, when he's fully healthy. When he's fully healthy. So I don't even know how to really rate, bro. Like, he's not... You can't... I can't... You can't be the, my best player on the team and you're just not healthy at the right time of the year. It's just... It's just not possible. Like, you have to have somebody else on your team that's better than you for you to be able to do that. I'm gonna be honest. Especially how good Embiid is when he is still hurt. Like, he can still get help whoever the better player is than him. But, like, you just can't have him being out there playing hurt and, like, you never know if he's going to have a good game or not because he's trying to play through with an injury or he's just going to miss games. So, like, yeah, bro, I don't I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't do it. Josh Hart. Did I not rank Josh Hart already? Josh Hart, the, the Jimmy Butler injurer. But um, I think J Josh Hart is one of the better role players in the league. I would put Josh Hart... I'll put him right here with the TJ McConnell of the world. Really slept on role player. Mitchell Robinson. Mitchell Robinson is a great office rebounder. He's pretty athletic for how tall he is, too. I'm not going to lie. But besides that, like, he's a good rim protector, too. I'll put... And he's a lot more athletic than a lot of these other rim protecting bigs. Like, he's not as bad switching on to other people. He's going to play drop, but he's not as bad as you would expect. I would put, I'll put, bro, like, right here. Right here. Yeah. Um, Dwayne Demon is the worst nigga in the league. I don't give a damn. I don't care. I don't care. I do not care. Um, James Harden. At this stage of his career, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to keep it a whole stack with you. I'm going to keep it a bean. 
James Harden did enough in that series. If he had a bro, for what I think he is, I think James Harden for majority of his career has been like a low like second best player on your team. Or no, not low. No, 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 no. That's cap. That was, that was cap. That was cap. That was cap. That was cap. But right now, let me just let me just focus on right now. Right now, James Harden has to be your third best player on your team. You need to have two players better than him on your team, in my opinion. You need to have two better players. Um, if you want to be a real championship team, he could be the second best, but like you have to have a really really good like roster around that. Now, I think the Seventy Six have a pretty good roster around that. Like they have like four people that damn near average twenty points per game. That's as close as you can get, especially with a player that's MVP caliber. That's as close as you can get to having it perfect for him to be still a second option. It's just that, it's just that, bro, I really feel like he did enough in that second round. First round, he was awful. But in that second round, he did enough, in my opinion. Even though he had more bad games than good, but he literally won them two games. Like, you're not really expecting, like, your second... You're not expecting a third option to do that. I'm gonna be honest. Like, he had two first ca option caliber games. I'm not gonna lie. But, yeah, I would definitely say he's firmly a third option. I'm gonna put him right there with Trey Young. I'm gonna put him above Trey Young. No, I'm gonna put him right there with Trey Young. I'm gonna put him right there. I think Trey Young... Ah, uh, but you can take advantage of Trey Young so much easier. Yeah, I'm gonna put him right there with Trey Young. I'm gonna put him right there with Trey Young. I'm gonna put him above Darius Garland. That's where I'll keep it. That's where I'll keep it. I'm going to be honest. Because I think Tyrese Halliburton on the uh, 76 will be very interesting in that James Harden role. I'm, I'm going to keep it where he is, though. I'm going to keep it where he is. Um, he may James Harden may be better as a third option after what I watched in those two games. I'm not going to lie. Now, he did have some pretty bad games besides that, but that's besides the fact. Um, Tobias Harris. I think Tobias Harris was pretty okay in the playoffs. I think he's a high level role player, but like he's either he's either like But why is he so high? <laughs> what the fuck? He's either right here or like right here. Like I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, like he's he's just overpaid. Like I feel like he gets a, a lot a lot of hate because he's overpaid. But, like, he's a pretty decent three-level score, bro. I'm not going to lie. He's a pretty decent three-level score. Um, Precious Achua? I'm not ranking, bro. I'm just putting him at the back of rank key role player. Um, Scotty Barnes. Scotty Barnes is a high-level role player, but, like... Yeah, I'm putting you right there with Denny. Um, Otto Porter, he was hurt for most of the season, so I'm going to put him glue guy. I'm put him right there with the old guy. Uh, Royce O'Neal. I'm tired of ranking some of these players. So some of these players, I'm just not even finna rank. I'm just gonna throw them in the in tier. Uh, ben Simmons. Ben Simmons, man. You gotta play, bro. I'm gonna put you ben, I'm gonna put you bench more. I was gonna say Ben Simmons. Lori. Lori had a great season this year. Like, Lori actually had a really good season this year. I'm gonna put Lori. I'm gonna put Lori right there behind Franz. Yeah, I'm gonna put Lori right there behind Franz. Or he may even have to go behind Brooke. But he already had a really good season this year. I'm not going to lie. Lori's a pretty decent three-level scorer. I don't think his playmaking is going to hold. I don't think his playmaking is holding up. Um, he's an okay rim protector. Not a really a good defender. He's an okay defender. So, yeah, I'll put him right there. I'll put him right there. He's like a fringe low third option on a championship team or a high level role player. He's one of those. He's one of those. Lori may need to go down even more. Think about it. Yeah, Lori gotta go down. Lori gotta go down. I'll put him right there. I'll put him right there. Like, I was kind of tripping right there for a second. Um, Jalen Bronson. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put Jalen Bronson right here. I uh, I don't think for the totality of the season I can put him above Donovan Mitchell, but he was so much better in the playoffs. Like he was so much better in the playoffs, which is, in my opinion, more important than the regular season. I don't really know what I don't really care what you got to say about that, but in my opinion, the postseason is where it matters most. <laughs> 
So like you outperforming players that just was better than you in the regular season. That's that's when it matters most. So yeah, Jalen Bronson, you could argue is better. I wouldn't really do that, but based off his performance this year, that's why I would rank him. He had a really good year this year, man. I'm gonna be honest. RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett is RJ Barrett. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really know how the Celtics, like all the Celtics had to do was watch the the uh, film, bro. All the, bro, all the Knicks was doing was pretty much like babying our our our, our small guards, like how small our lineup was. I don't know how the Celtics have all that length and they just didn't remotely do it. I seen multiple times they would pass the ball on a roll by Al Horford. And Al Horford would catch it and just throw it out to a three pointer, like. I don't know how the Celtics just didn't do that. I'm going to be honest. But, hey, it what it is. Stupid guy, stupid do. Stupid does, but stupid is. Um, RJ Barrett pretty much just took advantage of that. Um, for the most part, um, his last or seven of his last eight games in the playoffs was really good. His first couple playoff games was bad. His last playoff game was bad. So, and he wasn't that good in the regular season either. So, actually, no, nah, we got to lower you a lot more. Think about it. You were not good in the regular season game. I'm going to put you right there with Denny. But he did have some good games in the playoffs. That doesn't really just make up for everything that he did bad in the season. So, yeah, I'm going to do it like that. Nick Claxton. Nick Claxton. High-level role player, but where? I'm going to put... I like... i rather... i rather... Um, i rather his style of defense more so than these two. Any day. So, yeah. THT, you're going. I'm not ranking you. Um, Cam Thomas, I'm just putting you in potential because like, you don't get three straight forty point games and not have potential. Like, I'm sorry. I don't care how bad you are at anything else. You don't get three straight forty point games. <laughs> you don't get three straight forty point games and not have potential. I'm sorry. You, that's just not real life. I don't know what's going on over there with the Nets. That's just not real life. Patty Mills, Patty Mills is a glue guy. Joe Harris, elite. But like, yeah, all these guys are better at what they do. Um, Matisse Thibel. Walker Kessler. Walker Kessler is a tough one to rank because he's really good around the rim scoring-wise and defensively. Take that entire part of the game away he's not really much but like right, what he does he's pretty elite already so i'm gonna put him at elite I'm put him at elite i'm gonna put him right there noah vonley i remember they were saying this was the zion stopper that's crazy how fast time flies how much more oh my gosh no we're just getting through these okay cam reddish bench warmer jordan clarkson that's the definition of inflated stats right there again actually yeah, he's pretty, he's pretty good, bro. He's a pretty good six, man. I'm going to be honest. He's a pretty good six, man. Uh, we just going to throw you there, though, gang. Okay? I'm not going to lie. Kelly, Kate, Kate, Kelly Olenek, throw you there. Throw you there. Mikael Bridges. All right. Being honest with you, Mikael Bridges is not a number one option. That is not real life. On a championship team. Keep in mind, all this is on a championship team. On a championship team. Based off their performance this year. He's not a number one option. Mikael Bridges is not a number two. He wouldn't be able to be the second best. What team would he be able to be the second best player on? I don't think there's a lot of teams. Um, Mikael Bridges would have to be a number three. I think easily but like even when you say that I yeah I think if he was the number three on the Celtics they that's a ring I think that's a ring I'm not gonna lie put him on the back on the Suns with KDMD book that may be a ring nah I ain't gonna lie they need more role players they just need more role players in general he played on the Nuggets that's a ring that's a ring, gang. Who else? He played 
76 is, I don't even know if that's a ring. I'm not going to lie. I, don't, I have no clue. It's too much It's too much variables going on with their team. Lakers, is that a ring? I don't know. It does improve a, a big hole they have, three-point shooting, but, like, I don't know. That's an interesting one. That's a very interesting run. That's a very interesting one. But on the Warriors, that's that's a big pickup. I don't know if that's a ring. On the Heat, that may be a ring. I'm not going to lie. That may be a ring. That literally may be a ring. That's another defender that they can throw at you that has more length than they already didn't have. And he can shoot three. That may be a ring. I don't know. Um, the Bucks. I don't even think he's the third best player on the Bucks. He goes to the Bucks because Drew Holiday is better than him. Brooke Lopez is better than him. We already know Giannis is better than him. I'm going to put bro at the top of high-level role player. I'm going to put him at the top of high level role player, borderline star. He's either right here or right here. He's one of those. He's one of those. And I'm going to put him right there for now. Because I think Lori deserved his, uh, he deserved to be a star after last year. Um, but I think Mikael Bridges is also a star in his role as well. So that's tough. Um, Seth Curry. Seth Curry is a very, very weird one to rank. Being honest with you. I'm going to put him on key role player. And we're going to keep it moving. Spencer Denver, these key role player. Keep it moving. Dorian Finney-Smith, key role player. Keep it moving. Cam Johnson is an elite role player. We're going to throw him. We're just going to throw him at the back and keep him moving. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Carnegie Towns. Yeah, he's he's the third option. Like, quite easily. Shea. Shea is the second option. Quite easily. He's like supplanted in that in that role. Like he's he's good enough on both ends at all three levels, scoring wise. Good playmaker. Like, yeah, second option. He's healthy. Like, yeah, any uh, yeah 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 second option. Um, you could really argue based off the whole season he would be like around here. But AD was so good defensively, you gotta really give it to him. I will probably put him like right there for now. Um, Simon's. Simons, he's either, he's either right here or here. I'm going to put him there. Um, Lou Dort. Put him here. Anthony Edwards. Stage in his career, he's definitely a third option. Where should I rank him in third option? Right there with JB. Actually, I think I would probably rather Ant over all of them. Not a lie. Because he's on both ends with it. Yeah, I'm capping on this one. I'm not going to lie. I'm capping on this. Yeah, I probably rather like that. He's on both ends with it. He's better. I think he's better with the ball in his hands as well than JB. I don't know if he's as. But JB was so inconsistent in the playoffs, too. But I feel like a lot of the time, that was really more so the Celtics. Like, in the first two rounds, it felt like the Celtics would go away from JB too early. And he would just end up with not enough shots. In the in the Heat round, it was quite obvious the Heat was just taking advantage of his weaknesses. But in the other two rounds, it was just weird how they were dealing with Like, they would get they would build a lead off playing through Jason Tatum and, and JB pretty, pretty interestingly. I will be honest. It wasn't really consistent, though. It just really wasn't consistent. JB's, like, shot attempts or his aggression. I don't know if it was his aggression or the Celtics really just not giving the ball a lot. I don't know what that really was. But, yeah, I think this is really more. Uh, but D. Mitch was only one round. D Mitch is so bad defensively. I don't know, bro. D Mitch is so bad defensively. Alright, I'll do it like this. Celtics fans, let me know who y'all would rather. D Mitch or Jalen Brown. I think y'all would say D. I think y'all would say JB. I don't know though. But it's a lot of Celtics fans are kind of crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Jaden McDaniels. Jaden McDaniels is a good role player. I'll put him uh I'll put him elite specialist. He's one of the best defenders in the entire NBA. Put him right there with um Vanderbilt. Josh Giddy. Throw him at the back. 
I like him a lot. He's potential. He's he's potential. He was already like a he was already like right there. I'm not gonna lie. He was already first year. Like I'm gonna be honest. Like already right there. Um, I like him too. I like him too. He's one of a, he's one of the better backup bigs in the entire league. He's not better than some of these guys that's in this tier though. So let's put him. Let's just put him. Let's just let's just let's just throw him there. Let's throw him there. Be a hot take, but that's the honest truth. Mike Conley, key role player. Torian Prince. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I have no clue. I, 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 bro. I'm pretty sure that's Torian Prince. Chet did not play this year. He did not play this year, so we have to throw him in potential. I'm putting him most potential though. So y'all, all y'all OKC fans, don't get mad at me. So yeah. Don't get mad at me. I, I'm just being honest with y'all. Um, Isaiah Joe, he's a specialist. He just shoots a three. Damian Lillard. Dame is a tough one to rank, man. He first damn sure can't be the first option on the uh, championship team. But can Dame be a number two? I think based off this year, I think Dame, like if you just look at 2023 alone, part of the season, he had one of the wildest offensive seasons I've ever seen in my life, statistically. Like that shit he was doing was crazy. The only nigga that was even on par with that nigga statistically, offensively, was Jokic. That's it. Like that nigga was hooping. Like he was like on some 35 points per game, 40% shooting, 50% from the field, 90% from the. Uh, free throw like he was on 50 40 90 with like 35 points per game that's insane like i don't think y'all understand how wild that is so like off his sheer craze i think he can literally be like the number one scoring option on a championship team i think he could he just has to have a better player on his team like if he played with Giannis, he could be if he played with Jokic, he could be like he he could be that like he could he could win a ring with those two like easily he, he could uh, he could do that so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put him at I'm gonna put him I'm gonna put him at second option. I'm gonna put him at second option. I'm gonna put him at second option. He he can, he's defense is not really there, but like if you put him with the right like number one option, if you put him with a number one option, I think he could get it done. I think he could. Um, I don't know how I forgot his name, but he's definitely a high level role player. I'm just going to throw him here, bro. I'm not going. I'm not even going to do all that. Victor. I don't even know why I have him on this list. Maybe I have him for, like, projections for next year. But we're going to throw Victor in potential. Top of potential. They comparing it. They said if this nigga turns into... They said if this nigga turned into Hakeem, that is a flop. That is a bust. Like, nigga. I ain't never heard no shit like that, bro. Like, niggas talking about Braun had way more... Uh, Way more expectations. Niggas literally compared this nigga. They said if this nigga is not Braun, MJ, Kareem level... He is a bust. Like, that is insane. Like, that is insane. I know they were saying Braun was the chosen one, but I ain't never heard nobody say if Braun was not MJ, he was a bust. Like, that's like saying if Braun was in Magic John if Braun was Magic Johnson. If he was Magic Johnson, he would be a bust. That's insane. That is insane, bro. Like, no, that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. Uh Trey Jones, key role player. Larry Nance. I'm gonna put you key role player, Jared Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron Jackson Jr. is either a third best player on a championship team or high level role player. I'm gonna put him as a third because I think his ability to stretch the floor and he can shoot the three ball really well. On top of how good he is defensively, yeah, I think he'd be the third best player. Um, Zion. The thing with Zion is health, <laughs> like. I think Zion honestly could be the second or even first best player on a championship team. The nigga is never healthy. He even started playing defense this year. Like, oh my gosh. Like, bro, Zion, like, literally, in my opinion, out of all the people in the league, the only person that if they all stayed fully healthy, that could actually 
be better, like, that has more potential than Luka. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, like Zion is actually him. I'm going to put him second option, but his health is really what holds him back. His health is literally what holds him back. Keldon Johnson, I'm going to put him in the high-level role player category. Um, Devin Vassell, I'm going to put you in key role player. Jonas Valanciunas, I'm going to put you in key role player. CJ McCollum in high role player. Okay, we need to we need to um make this a little bit smaller again. We may even need to make it a little bit more small. Oh no, this is straight. Okay. Um Yeah, Dylan Brooks. He's not a borderline star, but he's a star in his role. Like he's a he's really good role player for what he's gonna do, but like he's not a good shooter. He's just really a good defender. But he's not like one of the best defenders in the league. I'm gonna put him as a key role player. I was gonna cap on that. Um, elite specialist, one of the best three point shooters in the league. Brandon Ingram is a third option. I'm not ranking. I'm not ranking him no more though. Um, I already ranked him. Okay, so some of these people are already ranked. Like all these Celtics. Yeah, let's 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 let's, let's, let's move some of these. Some of these guys that are already ranked. We don't even gotta rank these guys most of the time. Let's, let's simmer down on that. Okay. Okay, Dyson Daniels. I like Dyson Daniels. I'm going to put him key role player based off this year, though. Jose Alvarado, key role player. I'm going to put him glue guy. I'm going to put him high level role player because he's that curb is that good defensively already. Derek Favors is a key role player. Um, Sochan. Uh, I ain't going to lie. We need to, we need to, we need to, we need to, we need to. Bro, this is going to be the most unseeable tier list of all time. But hey. Do what you got to do. So, Chan, hey, bro, was hating on Braun heavy in that Nugget series. I know I wasn't the only one seeing that. Um, I'm going to put him glue guy because I haven't seen enough out of him. Scoot, I have Scoot on here. I'm going to put him in potential. I think potential-wise, he's behind Chet and um, Victor. But, like, he could end up being better than both. Scoop athleticism wise is some of the craziest athleticism I have ever seen. But like I don't think people is I think people are giving him weird expectations. I don't think he's gonna be like this score. I think he's gonna be like a good playmaker that can play great defense. That can score, but like he's not just a score, you know what I'm saying? Like I think his strength is gonna be playmaking and defense more so than scoring. Or no. His strength is obviously gonna be his athleticism. That's always gonna be his strength, but like I don't know. I think people are thinking of him in the wrong light. In my opinion, uh, KPJ, um, I guess key role player, uh, Christian Wood, that's a key role player. Kevin Horder was a high level role player, in my opinion. Luca is a first option. I think he can be the best player on a championship team. He just has to have the team. He has to have a second option. He has to have a third option. He has to have those things. Like the closest thing he had was Jalen Bronson, who. At that time, I don't even think he was the same. I don't think he was as good. I think he actually got better on the Knicks. Now, you could say he got a bigger role, all that type of stuff. But, like, even when Jalen Bronson was playing, when uh, Luka wasn't playing, I don't think he was as good all, all around, in my opinion. I don't, I don't think that. But, like, you can you can believe that if you do. If you do, you do. I mean, either way, I still have him as a third option. That would still just be, at most, a third option. Like, he never had a real second option, I don't think, yet. So, yeah. Um, John Morant, John Morant is, I'm not ranking him, but he's, he's like, he's like high third or like mid third. Josh Green, key role player. Uh, Desmond Bain is a high level role player. Yeah, Desmond Bain is a high level role player. Um, Davion Mitchell is a key role player right now. Really good defender. Alfred Singoon is a potential. I like him a lot, but... I'll put him, like, right here. He's a really good offensive player already. Uh, Jabari Smith. Jabari Smith. Oh, single was not a rookie. Oh, but I, I, the, all of these niggas are not rookies. So, yeah. Uh, Jabari Smith. I'm going to put Jabari Smith. I'm going to just put him right here. I'm put him right there. I think Sengun got a little bit more potential. But I like, actually, Jabari Smith, I like him. But they got to utilize him a little bit better. Hopefully, even Udoka use them a little bit better, but yeah, that'll be interesting to see. They may not do that. So, um, JaVale McGee, 
key role player. Harrison Barnes, key role player. Reggie Bullock, key role player. Jalen Green, that's an inflated stat guy right there. That's an inflated number guy. But I think he could be, a, you could also argue borderline star. I would say where you put him in borderline star. So I'm going to just put him right there for now. Um, potential. I'm putting him potential. I like him, but I'm not going to overrate him or anything. I'm going to just put him right there with the Cam Thomas. Uh, he's a good shooter already. Damn, bro. This list is getting crazy. I'm going to put him in elite specialist because he's already one of the better three-point shooting players in the league. Kyrie is a third option. Maxi Kleber, role player. And Tim Hardaway, role player. Uh, Steven Adams is a high-level role player, in my opinion. He does a lot of the little things really, really well. Like, set good screens, one of the best box out. Like, he's, he does a lot of really, like, small things really well. Offensive rebound. Like, he does a lot of the little things really, really well. He's a really decent rim protector. He just doesn't get a lot of blocks like a lot of people. Like, he's a really, really, like, really underrated player. So, bonus. Yeah. I think Sabonis is like a, a high level a high level role player, personally. That's just me. That's my that's my opinion, by the way. Um, De'Aaron Fox is easily a third option. Um, yeah, I would say easily a third option. You could argue. Nah, that's where I probably would put him. I'll probably put him right here, to be honest with you. Based off the season, I probably put him. You probably you got to be like low two or high three, low two or high three. Caleb Martin. Caleb Martin is a. Uh, Caleb Martin. He can attack closeouts. He can knock down shots. He's a good defender. Key role player. I want to say high level role player, but he's not in that tier of those players. He's just not. Duncan Robinson is an elite specialist. He's just really good at knocking down threes. Gabe Vincent is a, a, a key role player. Um, Jordan Poole is a high-level role player. Kaminga. I think Kaminga is just potential still at this point in his career. So I'm going to put him there. I think he has more potential than a lot of these guys, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to put him right there. Uh, Moses Moody. I like Moses Moody, like... Right now, I think he's a better player right now, especially for the Warriors right now, than uh, Kaminga. I like Moses Moody already. I like my, Moses Moody for sure. I don't know if he has more potential. But I'm going to put them right there and side by side. I'm not going to I like Moses Moody a lot. Kyle Lowry, key role player. Draymond Green, key role player. I mean, on the Warriors, he's probably high level role player, but on a regular team, he's a key role player. That's not we're not basing it off of we basing it off of a championship team, not just one championship team. Like he wouldn't be able to be if he was on the Nuggets, he wouldn't be able to be a high level role player. It's just not it's not real life. You know what I'm saying? He would he had to, like oh, if you think about majority of championship level teams, he would have to be a key role player. Like just the perfect system for him. So like to be able to shine, especially with the perfect players. Uh Andrew Wiggins is a high level role player. But you could argue third option too. But I would say high level role player this year. Um, I don't think he was as good this year as he was last year. Bones Highland. I'm going to put Bones either here or here. You can go one of these. It doesn't really matter. He's either a 3 and D. Uh, uh, not 3 and D. He's either a six man that can play some defense or he's a good guy. You know what I'm saying? Um, Stephen Curry is a one option. He can be the best player on your team. Anybody need to? We need to. Anybody want to argue that one? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nobody, okay. Uh, Clay Thompson, at this stage in his career, is, uh, hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. Clay is a, Clay is a inflated numbers guy. Low impact. I'm sorry. Like, like besides shooting, now, what does Clay Thompson do? <laughs> besides shooting, what does Clay Thompson do? Like, somebody let me know. He's not a good defender anymore. He can't play make. Let me know. What does Clay Thompson do? <laughs> At this point in his career, what does he do? Somebody let me know. Kevon Looney. Key role player. Bam Adebayo. Third option. 
trying to think though. Bam on a lot of different teams. Like, I'm gonna be honest. Bam and Dame. I'm gonna be honest. I'm trying to build like I'm trying to think of it. Dame could be a one with Bam as his two if their three is let me think. If their three is like But they have to have a pretty good team around them. They have to have like a uh a, a, a Bridges on their team, a, an Anobi on their team, like somebody in that like they have they even have to have two people in that realm. So nah, they definitely they definitely two and threes. Two and threes. I think Bam is a high three though. I would put Bam like I'll put Bam like right here. I think Ant probably is better though. Not gonna lie. Jimmy. Um Jimmy's a tough person to rank. Um, I think... I don't really think Bam and Jimmy really fit together offensively at all. Which is why I've always pushed the fact that I feel like they should kind of move off one of them to, like, kind of better to fit because having two non-three-point shooting shooters as your two best players is kind of crazy. But... It's kind of non-debatable in the East. They've been the most dominant duo in the East the past four years. Two finals appearances and three conference finals. That's pretty That's pretty dominant, I'm not going to lie. So, can't really argue against it. I kind of think that's just really more so Spo because our role players ain't even really that good. But, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Jimmy Butler... And this is based off the whole season. In the playoffs, he was like a, he was like, he was like here. He was like here. We basing it off the playoffs only. But for the regular season, he's not there, bro. He's just not there. He wasn't even better than Bam in the regular season. If y'all didn't know, Bam was the only person on the Heat that made the All Star. Now Jimmy made the All NBA team. Bam didn't make an All NBA team, and Simonis did. So that's just another thing. But I don't know. Um, Jimmy should be. Probably right there. For the whole season, he probably should be right there. He's probably at the top of third option or at the bottom of second option. He's either right here or right here. No, he would probably be right here because of health. He probably either be right here or right here. Really on you. Only reason Zion is this low is because of health. I'm gonna be honest. He would be even higher if he was healthy. I'm gonna be honest. Being honest with you. Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero is a high level role player at this point. Not really nothing to say there. Um Max Strews, key role player. Victor key role player. Key role player. I'm gonna just throw you Google guys so I, I have space. Um Malik Monk. I think Malik Monk was a high level role player this year. Um Russ is a tough one to rank. Cause he was much better on the on the uh He was much better on the um Clippers. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put him high I'm gonna put a high level role player. Zubak. Oh my gosh, we gotta, bro. Oh my gosh. No. How do I, bro, how do I change this? Hey. Nah, this is not gonna work. Nah, this is just not gonna work. We just gotta scroll at that point. <laughs> we just gotta scroll at that point. I'm not gonna lie. All right, we gotta get this done. All right. Bruce Brown. I honestly think Bruce Brown is a high-level role player, personally. Um, and all the phases that he does, he's a good penetrator. He can knock down a three ball. He's a good defender. He's a good point of attack defender. He's a good off-ball defender. Like, I don't really, I don't really know what more you want to add your role player. He's a pretty good role player in my opinion. I think Michael Porter Jr. is a high-level role player. Um, actually. Put him in elite specialist. 
Nah, I'm gonna put him behind the little player. Already ranked him. Um, Kawhi. Kawhi is so tough to rank, bro. Cause again, this is all health. If he's healthy, he's he's a one. If he's fully healthy, he's a one. Like he's a one. But he's never healthy, so he's gotta be a two. And I gotta put him up with a Zion, cause he's shown he's way he's shown way more than Zion. KCP key role player. Jamal Murray is. I mean, he won the championship as the second option, so. Yes, uh, I would say Jamal Murray for the uh, for the whole season is really more so here. This is not a, some of this is in order, some of it isn't. So I'm just not trying to do all that. But I would say he's more so of a third option if he's not in the perfect system and with the perfect number one. But I I put him here. I put him here because he did win. He he got the job done. You can't argue that. D book is a number two, like firmly a number two. And I'm putting D book up there. Like D book is up there. Like. D book can literally be the number one scoring option on a championship team. He just can't be the best player. He can be the number one scoring option though. Like he can score that joint. Uh, Malcolm Brogdon has already been ranked. Aaron Gordon, high level role player. Um, KD. KD is a tough one to rank, man. Because KD defensively, he's a good. He's a really good role, uh, rim protector. KD has gotten them better at playmaking but he still makes some bad decisions very inconsistent i'll just say he's good he's not great or ex ex uh, elite he's just good um we all know how kd is scoring the ball at all three phases now in the regular season he would have been first option in the playoffs he was just two he was just two he was like right here i put them both right there i think d book was better in terms of the totality of the season because i think um, if i'm not mistaken KD was better in the regular season, but D Book still had some good. He had some good moments in the regular season. Like he got hurt, they went from the one seat to like the ten seat or something like that. I don't know what seat they went dropped all the way down to, and then he came back. They got back up to the fifth seat. KD, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I, I, I yeah, I think I think in totality D Book had a better overall season, but KD had a better regular season. But KD postseason wasn't that bad either. Like it was just kind of he just was kind of inefficient for KD standards. Um, Malcolm Brogdon, we already ranked you, gay. We already ranked you. Put him back here. DeAndre Ayton, I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, this nigga is the most insane. Like, I was, I've, I said it during the playoffs when it was the Suns versus the Nuggets. I said it in the playoffs when it was the Suns versus the Clippers. I have never seen a 7'2 big man this damn athletic. And the nigga can't do any of the big three things that you want a big man to do. This nigga can't rebound. This nigga don't dunk. And he don't protect the rim. He don't even set good screens for real. Like, bro does nothing that you want a big man to do. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't even want him on the court if I'm him. Now, I think Frank Vogel was a good signing because he going to get him right. He going to get him right. But based off this year, especially playoff, playoffs, bro, bench warm. Put that nigga on bench like he can score the ball but like actually no nah, he can score the ball but like no 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 right here no that's probably where he is low impact like bro low impact low impact like low impact like yeah but low impact hopefully he can bounce back next year but nah bro that was bad chris paul key role player paul george Paul George is tough to rank, bro. What the fuck? Bro, I, I don't want to say third option, bro. I don't want to say third option, bro. I'm putting third option. He has to be third option. TJ Warren, I'm going to put key role player. Norman Powell, high level role player. Eric Gordon, key role player. Harris Man, key role player. That's my tier list. Hey. That's as good as we can get it. Hey, that's my first option, second option, third option, high level role player, inflated guys, elite specialist, potential, key role player, glue guy, bench warmer. Those are my tiers. That's how I would rank it. Hey, if you made it this far in the video, W you. Cause hey. Hey, you shout out to you, bro. Cause like, I don't know how you made it this far. This this is 
This was in incredible to make. Um, um, I probably have to do this all over again when it gets closer to the season, and I have the rookies for even more of the rookies for next year. But yeah. That's about it for today's video. If you guys want more videos like this, make sure to like the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're new. And by the way, yes, I made this tier by myself. So, yes, I, I had to put all these players on the tier. I had to do all. So, yeah, if you guys do want to show the support by liking the video, subscribe, all that good stuff, show the support all you can, just make sure you do that. Make sure you turn on notifications. Make sure the video that anybody think will help or enjoy all that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, man, it's your boy Fitz, and I'm out there, man. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah!